What's going on guys? I hope everybody's having a good Friday so far. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make this pixelation transition effect. So in my game, I've added this room that has holes in the bricks and uh, there might be some type of like circular, like dungeon folly spiky thing below this. But um, so when you fall, you can see that the character, he pixelates and then he teleports above and it's such a cool transition and th this is useful for like a lot of things like if you die after you die this could like it could pixelate the screen and then you could use it to like transition to like the lobby or whatever uh screen you're going to be going for but uh yeah the entire project is available for download in the description of the video for free uh so you're welcome to download it and you can use anything in the project in your game like there's no like uh licensing i don't have like a patreon or anything like that so if you like the content you can just like the video or subscribe to the channel or you know, leave a comment or do whatever, but uh, yeah. All right, so I'm going to show you how I set this up. There's a lot of tutorials on how to do this already, but they only show how to pixelate your game so that it stays pixelated all the time. They don't show you how to do like an animated transition using the same kind of method. And I'm going to show you the animated version. So the first thing you need to do is if you right click at the bottom, you can create a render texture. We're just going to call this tutorial pixelation. And then on the right side, there's a filter mode. We need to change this to a point filter. So if you don't have it on a point filter, it won't show as squares. It will show as like, it will blur between the different pixels and it will look very blurred. So then we need to copy our main ca camera. So you can press control D on your main camera to copy it. And just make sure it's below all the other cameras in the scene for right now. This is just for the demonstration and the example. You can see that I have a falling camera, which is my pixelated camera, and I have it disabled by default. So if you disable another camera, like if you disable this main camera, then automatically this camera will take over. So like if there's only one camera in the scene, it will automatically switch between the cameras to the one that's active. What we need to do is inside of the camera, you can actually drag a render texture into the output texture slot. And uh, this could be used for like a lot of cool effects, but we're gonna be using it only to pixelate the screen by lowering the resolution. So then what we can do is if you right click on the left side, you can click UI raw image. And then mine automatically put mine inside of this canvas that I have, cause I've already created a canvas, but if you don't have a canvas already, it will create a canvas automatically. And if it creates it automatically, your settings are gonna be wrong. So just, if you look on the right here, you can copy my settings. The screen space has to be overlay. UI scale mode should be scale with screen size. And you could choose 1920 by 1080. This number doesn't matter, but it has to be the right ratio. So like you could do 1920 by 1080, or if your screen is larger, you could do like uh, 2560 by 1440, whatever your screen size is. There's, they're all usually the same ratio. Most of them are, what is it, 10 by 6 or something? I don't even know what the difference is. But a a anyway, so yeah, so just do 1920 by 1080. Uh, that will work best for my example anyway. And then what we want to do is in the, if you click on the raw image in the top left, you can click on this little button. And then if you hold shift, you see how there's like a little circle in the middle that appears while you're holding shift. Oops, no, I don't want sticky keys. Yeah, so if you hold shift and then you hold alt, you get this stretch option and you could just click on this and it will stretch the image to take up the entire screen. And then from there, if you if you click on the image again, you can see that it, it has a texture slot here and you can actually drag this tutorial pixelation texture directly into the texture slot. So you can see this immediately blurs the screen and it's 256 by 256. What we're going to be doing is we're gonna be setting this to 1920 by 1080. So when I start falling in my game, it will start, oh, it's the wrong size. Uh, I think I just have to disable it and re-enable it. That will fix it, yeah. Yeah, if it, if it starts out and you change it and it's the wrong size, just uh, disable it and re-enable it. We're gonna be doing that a lot in the code as well. Yeah, so if you change this, uh, we're gonna leave this as 1920 by 1080. And then when we fall, we're going to shrink this number, but it has to stay in this ratio. So if you have 1920 uh, by 1080, like uh, let's say you change it to, 192 by 108. This way, all of the pixels will stay the same size as it's shrinking. So this will be proportionate. So like you could also have 19.2 by 18 or 10.8. Oh, you can't use decibels either. These are uh, integers, right? So you, you'll just want, oh, 19.2, not... You'll, you'll just want to keep it in the same ratio. So like 19 by 10 is fine or 19, 20 by 1080 or if you take cut this number in half so uh i don't know uh, 980 probably by 540 so that like halves it you can't really notice that as much because your screen resolution starts really big but when you half it again like to uh, uh 
uh, five or four, four ninety maybe. Yeah, four ninety by two seventy, seven fourteen. Yeah, two seventy. I think it's more noticeable. And then as you make it smaller, it becomes more and more noticeable. I'm not going to keep doing this math. I'm going to make my brain blow up. But uh, yeah, so let's just change it to like two hundred by like one fifty or something, one forty, whatever. So the more you zoom out of it, like the, the lower these numbers get, the more pixelated it becomes. And that's where we get the effect from. So I've written a script that does this. So when we start falling, if we get below a certain height, it will start scaling these numbers based on their original size, which we're using 1920 by 1080. All right, so this is my player movement script. So this is just a standard kind of movement script if you followed a Bracky's video or if you watched the entire series because I did a whole video on doing the movement, you could go back in time and you can follow through with that. I'm not going to go through all this stuff, but I am going to go through, uh, for example, we're using player.animator here. Player is a static class that I wrote that is just used for saving variables. So if you declare a static class, these variables are global, which means you can access them in any script. This is very useful for things like the speed and the knockback and like the damage and the health. We might access these variables from many, many different scripts. Like if the zombie hits our player, we want to take health away from the player. We don't want to look up the player, like game object up find and find the player and then find the player script and do that. That's too much work, right? So I went over this in a previous video. Uh, it's called static variables or something. It's I think it's the second video in the series. So this is a series of videos. And if you go back to the second video, you can learn all about the static class, but we're saving the render texture. This is why we're here. I'm saving the render texture here as RT. And I'm also saving the the game object, this pixelating panel is being saved here as well. And then the falling camera, which is the camera that we just made. I've In my game, it's named falling camera. In your game, you can name it whatever you want to name it. But uh, yeah, so we got all the variables saved in here. And then I have another script called initialize player, where we have all of these variables as public variables. And then in the start method of this script, we initialize the static class, this, the global variables with these variables that we're inputting. So here we have um, the render texture is right here. And then the falling cameras here, et cetera, right? So then inside of the game, you can see on the right here of our player, we have this initialized player and I've dragged the camera and the blur texture into the slots that are for that because I'm going to be using player.rt to do some things. So this is where I'm getting that from. So if you're not using something like this, you could just make public variables for this at the top and then drag it in like you do for any other script. Hopefully that makes sense to most people that are watching this. It's more of an advanced video. So if you haven't used Unity for a while, this probably won't make a lot of sense to you. You can go watch some Bracky's videos and get up to date or whatever. But um, so anyway, so then I have a gravity script. This is the standard gravity script. Again, I'm not going to go through this. There's hundreds of videos on how to do this. If the transform position Y, which is like the height of the player, gets below negative 30 and it's not already pixelating, it starts pixelating. So we're setting the pixelation variable to true. And then we're starting this coroutine called blur screen and teleport, which is what actually does the thing. All right. So now I'm going to go through the I enumerator that we use to do this. You have to do this inside of an I enumerator because this is happening over time. So like every like certain amount of milliseconds, we're going to shrink the number of pixels to make it zoomed in more or like. Uh, the squares will become larger in the animation. So the first thing we're doing is we're saving the original height and the original width into variables here. And then we're activating all three of the things. So there's the pixelated panel, which is the panel that we added to our canvas that we created, which is the raw image, right? Then there's the camera, which is our player, the normal camera. So the main camera, we're disabling that. And then the falling camera gets activated. So the camera that we have with the render texture as render um, target or whatever, that is getting set active. So we're turning on basically the falling camera. Uh, we don't leave this on all the time. We only enable this when we're actually going to be doing this. Okay, so steps is the number of steps in the animation. So the higher this number is, the smoother the animation will be. Every single step, we're going to be reducing the size of the uh, the camera or the depth texture by 1%. So in the first frame, it's it starts out 1920 by 1080. So the first frame, we're going to be multiplying each of these numbers by 0.99 and then 0.98 and then 0.97, etc. And as you lower the number of pixels, it will pixelate the screen and turn into like square boxes everywhere, which is the, the effect that we're looking for. So 
if you turn this number down, the animation will be less taxing on the performance, but it will be less smooth. So the first frame, instead of it going only down by like a little bit, it will go down by more, right? So if you do like a tenth of the speed, it will be going down by 200 per frame or per, uh, not per frame, per um, iteration of the loop. This is the amount of time each frame is taking. So because this is an I enumerator, this is happening over time. It doesn't just happen immediately. So this is the time in between each step. So every 0.04 seconds is going to shrink the screen by 1%. Okay, so if you multiply these numbers together, you'll get the total uh, time that the animation is going to take. So for, in my case, my character falls into a hole, and as he's falling, he then teleports above the game, and then he lands on the ground, and it takes about 4 seconds. So if you multiply 100 steps by uh, 0.04 seconds, you get uh, 4 seconds, right? So that's the, the total length of my animation. Uh, so then we're going through the loop. So we're if for each iteration of this, the loop, we're going to wait the wait time, and then we're going to adjust the render texture size uh, to be I, which is the step that we're on, uh, so the first iteration will be 1, and then steps, which is 100. So we're passing these two numbers into this uh, method that we've created. If you click on this and press F12, it will jump to where the method is in the code. And so the first thing that we're going to do in the method is we're going to release the render texture. So this allows us to change the settings of it. While it's being rendered, you can't modify the settings. It's read-only. So you can release it first, and then we're going to resize the width and the height. And then we'll, um, so this is the calculation for it. This is where we actually assign it and then we recreate it afterwards. So this method is the maximum between one and this number. This will prevent this from going under one because if this number is zero or below, it will throw an error and crash your application. So this number has to, the, the width of the, the screen has to be above one. It can't be below one. We're taking the original width, which is 1920. And then we're multiplying it by the total steps, which is 100, minus the current step that we're on, which is 1. So this number would be 99, and then we're dividing it by 100. So that makes this number 99 over 100, which is 0.99. So then we're multiplying 1920 by 0.99, and then by casting it to an integer, we're removing the decimal place. Also, we ha we can only enter an integer into the width and height. There's not like decimal pixels in the render texture. That's not a thing. So you can only enter an integer. But if it's um, it, like in this case, let me get the calculator back out. So if we take 1920 times uh, 0.99, you can see that 0.8 is the remainder. This will truncate it. It won't round it. So this will actually end up as 1900, even though it's really close to 1901. The width after this calculation will be 1900. And then the height would be 1080 doing the same calculation. And then when this is done, it will use the create method to actually display this to the screen. Okay, and just before we continue, um, because we're using this dot create method, this is actually not memory safe. So on your like in the uh, same script that you have, the on destroy method, you should uh, release the memory and set this to null. If you don't do this, this will cause a memory leak, and your RAM will start using more and more and more until your either your Unity crashes or you exit out of Unity. So th there is a memory leak with this, so just make sure that you use this method. I also have set up on application quit, which uh, triggers this reset render texture. So when my game, uh, when I go to close my game, it will set the render texture to be 1920 by 1080. When you're setting this in the code, it will permanently change the render texture. So I have a render texture here, and it's 1920 by 1080. If I set this to like 100 by 100, and I don't reset it, this will change this permanently in the project settings. It it actually changes it in the project, not just in like your game. It's not like a temporary copy of it. You could probably create a copy of it, but we're not using a copy of it. We're using the actual thing. So like here, when you set the width, it will change the width in this actual thing. And if you stop out of the game, it will not change the width back. So if you don't have um, on application quit where you reset the size to the size that you want, it won't reset itself. And the next time you fall down a hole, it will start out at whatever it left off at. And then it will end up probably going below, not, not in my code, it won't go below zero because the max thing, but yeah, it will start out at a lower number and then it will probably fix itself, but. Okay, so where were we? So then we are, so this is this to actually blur out the screen. And remember our character's falling when this is happening because we're already at negative 30. Uh, then we disable the character controller so the character can't move anymore. Uh, just while we're teleporting, if your character controller is enabled still, 
wheel and you try to move the character with this position, it will teleport back to wherever it was before you moved it because the character controller, that's, uh, it's just, it's how, it's how it works. So after you've, uh, disabled the character controller, we're setting the gravity to zero. So that way, um, when you spawn above the ground, you don't keep the momentum. So if you just teleport above the ground, all the momentum you had from falling will be added still and your character will like smash into the ground extremely fast so we're setting this to zero so he slowly falls from where he teleports to so like he's going 100 above the ground if you don't do this he goes like crashing into the ground really fast then we're re-enabling the character controller so you can like move around and stuff so it'll only be disabled for like a millisecond pretty much uh while you're teleporting and then we're changing the steps to 10 so the, the speed at which it repixelates is significantly faster so the first set, we're um, lowering the resolution and we're pixelating it and making it look cool. In this set, in this section, we're still doing it over four seconds, but we're changing the step by a lot. So it's going, um, it's it's only doing it ten times, and it's growing at uh, ten percent per iteration of the step it's using the exact same method as before so i'm not going to go over that but it's literally the exact same thing except for instead of passing in uh i and steps we're passing in steps minus i minus one and steps then we're running restore original render texture size so this is going to reset the width and the height to the original width and the original height because if we've been changing this the entire time this is why i made this variable i was wondering why i made this but uh we've been changing these numbers the entire time so this will change it back to whatever it started as so like 1920 by 1080 and then we re-enable the correct camera so we disable the pixelating panel we disable the falling camera we re-enable the real camera we turn pixelating back to false so we're able to fall again and then we set the gravity back to zero as well. So the, the gravity will accumulate. So if you finish falling and your character lands on the ground, if you don't reset the gravity, when you go over another hole and he starts falling again, it will keep the gravity um, momentum that you had from before and it will apply it so your character will fall faster. You have to reset the gravity as well when you do this. And then we're using the heart script, which we covered in a separate video and we're taking one damage because you fell down the hole. So we do this after the fact, that way all of this is already done and the resolution is definitely back at the right size and all the variables are reset before we take the damage because the damage could kill you if you run out of health. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for the day. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. And um, I changed a lot of things in this uh, project as well. So every time I release one of these projects, there's like a lot of updates. So you can see that I've updated his attack speed to be way faster. I just felt like it was kind of like boringly slow and killing some of the monsters when walking through the rooms is just taking me too long. But um, probably in the final release, I'll probably be like doing a mid ground somewhere like halfway between the two. But uh, yeah, every time I release this, there's like a lot of changes that get made. So if you're not downloading my copy every time, it, it's probably a, a completely different experience. But uh, yeah, this is the pixelation script. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.